In the last couple of weeks, the AI agent war that seems to have been raging between the tech companies so far during the year has heated up. OpenAI has released ChatGPT Agent, and just a day later, Microsoft fired back when Jared Spataro, their chief marketing officer for AI, outlined Microsoft's bold ambitions that now include agents that work and function like team members. This stuff is moving so rapidly that even those who are totally immersed in it are finding it hard to keep up. So if you're a business owner, an IT director, or just the end user of these types of tools who wants to automate some stuff with AI, working out which direction to move in without immediate fear of missing out or FOMO is becoming almost impossible. In this video, I want to break down what the latest push in Asian technology is all about. I'm going to give you five good reasons why Microsoft's platform is the right place to start your agent journey, three reasons why you might want to look elsewhere, and one key aspect of this we must all keep an eye on to understand the true impact of bringing agents into our businesses. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick. I help smaller businesses achieve more using AI, and I specialize in Microsoft 365 Copilot and the AI tools that are part of Microsoft's platform. If what you see in this video is useful to you, it would be great if you could give it a like, drop a comment below letting me know what helped you the most, and consider subscribing so that you can see more like this in the future. And if you need more direct help with your organization's Copilot adoption or other AI project, consider reaching out to learn how I can help. Information on this is down in the description. I'll get on to reason number one in just a moment, but first, let's just talk ChatGPT's agent mode. This is a real, usable product that if you have at least a plus tier subscription for ChatGPT, you can go and try out today. It's designed to be a general purpose agent combining deep research, web browsing, and computer use capabilities to be able to carry out multi-step processes on your behalf. By contrast, Jared's LinkedIn post highlighted capabilities that are in Microsoft's stack in part, but will be arriving as an end-to-end -end product later. Is ChatGPT agent a watershed moment for AI agents or AI use in general? Well, it arrived in my ChatGPT account at the start of last week, and by Friday I'd still sat in front of my computer for roughly the same 40 hours that I had the week prior without ChatGPT agent. Did I use it? Yes, a bit, and sometimes it was helpful. But between technical issues where it just failed and understanding issues where it went off in the wrong direction and privacy issues where to actually finish a task I would have needed to give it access to services I was unwilling to provide, its actual payback in terms of productive output wasn't really that high. Some of this is on me or on all of us who need to get used to using this type of tool, but it also comes from the realisation that in terms of having the right guardrails to make this truly useful, we are far from all the way there right now. But still, for many of us, that AI FOMO kicks in. And before you know it, we might hear stories of the bride who had ChatGPT agent book her wedding reception on the wrong day, or the person for whom it accidentally ordered 100 pizzas to the wrong address. With every AI advance, these types of cautionary tales of what can go wrong tend to spring up. And while they do elicit a type of morbid curiosity, they also tend to lead to the question, what if? My take is this. Everyone in business should be looking at these tools with the understanding that there are definite positive impacts to be had. But like with every leap forward, it's a time to pause and strategize rather than a time to jump in with both feet. The war to lead the AI agent's revolution isn't about one leap forward. It's about a thousand steps that put in place the technology, the guardrails, and the human-centered understanding to develop tools that can do useful work, fit into existing structures, and operate safely. ChatGPT agent may become that, but right now that's not what it is. So if you're starting this journey and planning for where agents might go next, what are the reasons you might or might not choose Microsoft's tools to move you forward? Particularly if you're an organization already embedded in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. One of the key benefits to the AI infusion across Microsoft's whole ecosystem is there is AI tooling and also specifically agents aimed at every level of user and every level of the stack. 
if you're a Microsoft 365 user, you can use or build basic agents in Copilot Chat and in Agent Builder. And if you have a Microsoft 365 Copilot license or pay as you go turned on, you can extend these basic agents to work across most of the data you have in Microsoft's platform. For low code makers, there's Copilot Studio that allows you to build agents that can work with Microsoft 365 Copilot or elsewhere. And below this, we have options like Azure AI Foundry and its agent service that allow developers to quickly bring AI capabilities to agents and other apps. We also have the ability to interact with AI agents from many different third parties who already integrate their products into Microsoft 365. The fact that Microsoft's agentic offering largely built on top of Microsoft 365 has, in my opinion, some clear sideline benefits. Foundationally, agents need good data to be successful, just as has been the case with Microsoft 365 Copilot. However, by leveraging tools like Agent Builder Agents or SharePoint Agents in Microsoft 365, you gain a functionality while also gaining additional benefit from the data optimization you have probably already been doing. Additionally, new options that come in online to bring agentic capabilities to existing Power Platform apps or to Power BI resources mean that you can leverage agents as a layer on top of the services your workforce already use. More so than with many other options, embracing agents inside the Microsoft ecosystem is simply about layering on an additional benefit to the work you've already done, not about starting from scratch. One of the biggest benefits of Microsoft's full ecosystem approach is on how security and compliance that is existing across the product stack gets wrapped into the AI offer. First, your existing agreements with Microsoft and the trust you have for how they handle your data applies to their AI product line. But also, if you've invested time in content labeling, retention policies, data loss prevention, or other similar services, most of that layers directly into how Microsoft's core AI services like Copilot Studio or Microsoft 365 Copilot's agents work. Right now, it's pretty unclear how companies like Microsoft make a return on their investments in AI. A lot of organizations need to consume a lot of AI services on an ongoing basis to deliver the revenue needed to support capital expenditures to stay ahead on this technology. However, up until now, in most cases, it has been fairly easy to flow data freely between different SaaS services using behind the scenes integrations or APIs. But is this standard about to be changed? Salesforce seems to think so, after it was reported it recently changed usage and API terms for certain customer-owned data to make it harder to process it with third-party AI tools. There is nothing suggesting that Microsoft or other major vendors are following suit, but we can be fairly certain that whatever happens in relation to third parties, Microsoft isn't going to start pricing its services to discourage data use from across its ecosystem anytime soon. The initial released extensibility options for Microsoft 365 Copilot were pretty haphazard, but in the last couple of years, things have come together to create a much more connected ecosystem. If it's been a while since you took a look, it's probably time to see what's on offer again. We see robust integration between different levels of the tech stack and different end user experiences, from foundry models in Copilot Studio to Dataverse grounding in Copilot Agents to the new agent store that allows third parties to bring their agentic integrations to the Microsoft apps you already use. Can you achieve the same by building your own selection of different platforms? Well, with new capabilities like Model Context Protocol or MCP and Agent to Agent or A2A, certainly. But there's a lot more legwork involved. Microsoft is just building it to happen within their ecosystem relatively seamlessly. But while there are these really good reasons to jump into Microsoft's AI ecosystem to embark on your agent journey, I must acknowledge that it isn't the right solution for every organization. Particularly if you're currently entirely outside the Microsoft ecosystem, jumping in just for AI is still a challenging argument to make. However, I think even if you do have a foot in Microsoft's waters, there are still three important rationales you might argue for why not pursuing Microsoft AI or limiting how much you embrace it might be the right path for your organization. I can make lots of arguments in favor of Microsoft's approach to bringing AI into their ecosystem, but one that I cannot make is that they are leading the pack in terms of pure AI technology. The fact that Microsoft has to layer their AI services across a broad ecosystem and in alignment with a whole bunch of security and compliance needs means that their capabilities are better integrated, but often appear after the competitions. 
If your prime concern is getting your hands on new AI tech quickest, then Microsoft's approach maybe isn't for you. But you must be aware that you are potentially sacrificing safety for speed. I mentioned how working within one ecosystem could potentially offset future pricing model changes, but equally, it might not, and you might be concerned about vendor lock-in. A lot of businesses already have most of their eggs in the Microsoft basket, and if that's the case for you, then there are clear advantages to using Microsoft's AI tools too. But if you're already comfortable with using a range of different providers and services, there might be long-term advantages in taking this approach to AI integration too. Ultimately, you might end up paying more, but if, in the unlikely scenario, something happened to mean you needed to stop using Microsoft services, you'd be in a far stronger position to make it happen. Last, there are some businesses where the level of complication in Microsoft's AI ecosystem simply exceeds the need. If all you need is simple AI chat or some basic agents and you don't need to layer on top of complicated file integrations or compliance needs, then perhaps Microsoft's approach is too much for your situation. I think that Microsoft 365 Copilot plus Copilot Studio agents can make a lot of sense for some small businesses and even one-person businesses in many cases, but the sweet spot is probably not that for most situations. Microsoft's approach requires a certain level of setup and management in order to get back value, and if your needs are simple enough, you just might not find value there. And ultimately, whether you choose to build your agentic future with Microsoft's toolset or others, there are questions about how we approach this that are more to do with the humans involved than the technology. AI technology will likely continue to get smarter and our opportunities to integrate it into what we do will expand. Microsoft will not be the only company to conceive of the idea of agents largely working alongside and even with similar types of responsibilities to human users. SoftBank recently announced a plan to bring on board millions of AI agents across its operations, for example. How quickly we see a true transition to human agent teams is unclear, but what is clear is that part of your approach to maximising the potential of these tools is to focus on the impact on the humans. Now, and for some time to come, your success will be dictated by effective human oversight of AI and finding a way to transition that is comfortable for your existing teams, respectful of their skills, and cognizant of the broader societal impacts may be the most important factor in long-term success for all businesses. Microsoft might be ready to preview an agent that operates on a technical basis similar to a human worker in the next couple of months, according to Jared, but that doesn't mean your human teams are ready for that change. Tread carefully and with planning and intention if you want to find the right balance. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.